Welcome everybody. My name is Olga Fakani. I'm from the Department of Classics. And today I will talk about ways that we can channel our passion for the subject to our students, promote our students' engagement with the material we're teaching, and ways we can foster a collaborative learning community in our classroom. And I will use my experience teaching Latin One as a case study to talk about these things. And um, the reason why I want to use my experience teaching Latin is that while I was teaching Latin, it was my first time teaching this subject, and I really started thinking about these questions because, to me, the study of Latin grammar and syntax had always been this wonderful and exciting adventure, and I soon discovered that for my students, it wasn't at all. They were horrified and very scared of these super long book lists that they had to memorize, and these uh, uh, pages full of paradigms also to memorize, and these Latin sentences that they had to translate that were completely unrelatable, something like, we shall conquer the troops on account of our wisdom. And so it was a real uh, question for me um, to think about ways that I could engage my class, make my students love the subject, and also have a better time teaching it myself. So this was a very pressing question for me at the time. And um, so I am going to talk to you about some techniques and games that I incorporated in my teaching methods and that hopefully you will find useful and that my students responded to very well in their evaluations, in their emails to me, and in their overall performance in the class, which was very positive. So uh, how do we channel our passion for the subject? I think the most important thing to do at this point uh, when you want to channel your passion for the subject to your students is to think about the aspect of the subject that you're teaching that to you is the most important and exciting. And to me, thinking about Latin is the fact that um, teaching, learning Latin grammar and syntax, learning the Latin language allows us to access this body of knowledge and literature that goes back millennia. So in a way, it almost allows us to travel back in time and have these conversations with these authors and access all this knowledge that is so old but is still so meaningful to us. So there are different ways that you can um, channel this passion to the class. You can bring artifacts to class, so copies of old manuscripts or uh, uh, old texts like this. Or you can channel it through storytelling, which is my personal favorite way. Um, so I like to give my students a little bit of a taste of what this body of knowledge and literature actually is. And so, and so I tell them stories about the way that Virgil can describe human passions and emotions so vividly, or the way that uh, Cicero is such a skilled orator that he's able to charm any audience at his time. And so by giving my students these uh, um, examples of stories, I actually um, ignite that interest and I make the study of the boring syntax and grammar much more valuable for them because they see a goal in it. Um, how do we... Oh, okay. All right, so how do we promote our students' engagement then? There are a couple of different ways. Uh, promoting my students' engagement with the material was very important to me because um, Latin is a language class, so I had to teach it every day, five days a week, and my students got bored very fast and very easily. And so the way that I started um, trying to ignite the students' engagement with the material was uh, through memes, <laughs> like the one that we see here on the screen, uh, millennials speak translated into Latin, which is really funny, like, yas, ita, or lit in candium. <laughs> so my students had a lot of fun. And I also um, started creating my own memes, so I'm a huge <laughs> Harry Potter fan, so I just slightly modified the meme to remind my students that they have to revise their vocab. And then um, I am obsessed with my cat. This is actually my cat, Dante, in the picture. And so I started making these vignettes where my cat speaks Latin. And so my students had to, in order to discover what my cat was saying, very important, uh, they had to translate the Latin in the vignette. So they were using all the knowledge that they learned in class, but in a much more relaxed and actually very fun way, I think. Um, another thing that I thought was very important in my class was to be mindful of my students' struggles throughout the quarter. So something that I often forget is that my students go through different types of struggles during the quarter and it, it makes a huge difference for them to know that I'm aware and that they can rely on me. And so um, 
sending my students motivational memes or just motivational emails before midterms or finals went a long way into building this uh, trust between me and my class that then in turn had very positive effects on my students' um, overall performance because they just trusted me more, they told me about the struggles that they were having and we could work together as a team during my office hours, so it went really a long way. Um, next, how do we foster a collaborative learning in our classroom? So. I found that one of the most effective ways that I could foster this collaborative learning community in my classroom was by incorporating different learning styles in my teaching methods. So uh, for instance, here's a picture of a Latin advent calendar. <laughs> this is just an advent calendar that I got from Trader Joe's and I ate all the chocolates and I replaced them with Latin sentences. So my students would um, open a day and then pick a Latin sentence and they had to translate it so this is more of a uh, intrapersonal learning method for students who like to learn um, or engage the material on their own, kind of like one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but again, it's more relaxed and more fun than just quizzing them one-on-one -on -one in the classroom. So they had a little bit of fun and a little bit of tension was released through uh, this little game. Um, something else was group work. Uh, this is an amazing way to engage the students and uh, get to know what point they're at with what they're revising, but also dilute the stress that they're put on uh, when they're quizzed 101. So I made these uh, drawings based on uh, where my student, what my students were learning, and then I made copies of these drawings and I passed them around, uh, one drawing for each group in my class, and they would get to actually make up their stories to describe these drawings in Latin. So instead of having set sentences in Latin to translate that are often very unreliable, like I said, uh, they could actually make up their own narratives in Latin just like they would with Italian or French. Um, and so this is more of an um, interpersonal and visual learning style that most students rep respond to uh, very, very well. And another game that was a huge success in my class was a very special edition of Jeopardy Latin. <laughs> So I um, dressed up as Alex, Alex Trebek for Halloween. I apologize for the overall look with the wig and everything. <laughs> and then I just quizzed my students on this very special edition of Jeopardy. And I used a super easy uh, template that I'm more than happy to pass around via email uh, should you guys want it. And um, in fact, I am very grateful of being a TA at UCSB because I can count on such a beautiful community of other teaching assistants and professors that are there to guide me and uh, uh, improve my teaching methods. And so in this spirit of collaboration, I really want to make sure that if you guys want any of the material that I use, please email me. My email is going to pop up at the, end of the, at the end of the presentation, and I'm more than happy to uh, pass it along to you. So you can also uh, host your very private session of Jeopardy, in this case, Jeopardy X. Latin. Okay. <laughs> uh, I sorry that sorry that the video is a little bit blurred, but I couldn't show students' faces obviously, and I was trying to recreate Alex Trebek's voice in a horrible way. But okay, the, the game overall was a success. Um, so these were the uh, techniques. No, not another time. Nope. Okay, these were the techniques that I used in my class. And again, please feel free to email me with any questions that you might have or um, any material that I might give to you. Um, thank you for listening. It, it, I think maybe it was just me. I'm a huge technophobe, so I, <laughs> okay. even just hosting the Jeopardy thing was a whole deal. Whole thing. I had to prepare for a day. It was terrible. So, so does anybody have any questions for Olga? Question? Yes. Yeah, so, um, uh, you, you employed very creative um, techniques in, in translating your, your, the knowledge. I was just wondering, when it came time to grading and yes. or quizzing, uh, how were you, were you able to juxtapose the, how different, was there a big contrast between when it came time to grade and versus time to teach? Short answer, yes there was. <laughs> the quizzes were um, pretty harsh actually. Uh, so what I did is I incorporated these fun games and techniques with more serious one-on-one -on -one quizzing. 
because um, I followed, strictly followed the advice of my professor that said, you know, you can incorporate some games, but you also need to have some one-on-one -on -one intense quizzing. And I sort of like uh, managed to balance my students' uh, mental health by <laughs> doing a little bit of the harsh method and a little bit of games, which still required them to use the knowledge that they had accumulated throughout the class, the different classes, but um, some of the harsh quizzing was still very much required. No, because I implemented this method from day one. I mean, from day one, it was, okay, so we're going to do 30 minutes of a game, and then we're going to do 20 minutes of quizzing today. Or, you know, I'm going to introduce this new topic, and then I'm going to do five minutes of harsh quizzing, and then we're going to do 10 minutes of game. And um, this is actually a really good question, because it allows me to say this one more thing, which is um, this changing the method in class is actually very useful, because the students tend to get bored so easily when you talk about grammar and syntax. And if you constantly keep them busy, and you know, now we're doing this, and now we're doing this, and now we're doing this, they don't have time to get bored. And so they're constantly forced to engage with new things that you throw at them. And so at the end, it's, it, it proved to be really effective in my case, at least. Okay, we have time for just one more question. <laughs> yes, Emanuela. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, that was so cool. I have two questions. Yes, please. How did you come up with the ideas? Did you have this community behind you that you mentioned, or? My team. Yeah. <laughs> My team of brain. Yes, and secondly, have you ever considered to go outside the class and do an outside class? Like, I don't know. And how would you do this class? I, I'm going to answer the, f the first question first and then get back to the second. So the, in terms of how I came up with the ideas, um, some of the ideas I just came up with like the advent calendar, you know, I bought five because I love chocolate. And so I just started thinking, you know, I ate all the chocolates and it's December 2nd. What do I do with this piece of paper? I might as well use it in my classroom. And so that just came together organically. And so did the memes with my cat because, you know, it, there aren't that many memes about Latin. I don't know why. <laughs> and so I had to kind of like make my own. Uh, but for instance, Jeopardy was actually a suggestion of one of my students who's a graduate student. So she actually, she was in my class as a student, but she actually teaches her own classes as a graduate student. And so she said that she used a similar game, Jeopardy, but with art history. And so she gave me the template and, you know, that, that was just a suggestion of one of my students. Um, and my professor was always very available, you know, with discussing different games that they played and um, I kind of modified some of the games. Um, there's one where my professor used a, a dice, w which had like different sentences, and the students would roll the dice and pick the sentence, but I didn't particularly like that. So I used this uh, um, rubber ball instead that I would throw at the student and then quiz them very harshly. But the fact that they, it's, it's kind of like a mental game. The fact that they were throwing the ball around somehow made them more relaxed. So it's sort of like a variation. Um, but it's, it's definitely the effort of a community of people that work together and uh, it's not just me making up all of this. Uh, and the second question, I didn't really understand. So are you talking about maybe like having a, a classroom outdoors or? Yeah. Ah, with the, with the students. Yeah. Yes, that would be a good idea. I think, especially in Santa Barbara, beautiful Santa Barbara. <laughs> um, in a lot of my classrooms, I need the board, but maybe with a, you know, a movable board, that could be a possibility. Um, Maybe somewhere where they can sit, cause, or somewhere, somewhere with shade. So it, it would take a little bit of planning, but I definitely think that that would be great, actually. My students will love it, I think. So thank you.